You're watching Reality Check. It's exactly a month since the horrific attack on Salman Rushdie, the prize-winning author, viciously stabbed by a man while Rushdie was on stage at a public event in New York State. An act of violence which is believed to be linked to the fatwa issued against Rushdie in the wake of his 1998 novel The Satanic Verses. Also facing the attacker's fury was Henry Reese, who was moderating the event. Reese is associated with City of Asylum, a residency program for writers living in exile under the threat of persecution. And he joins me tonight on the show from America. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Henry Reese, for joining us. It's, uh, it's, it's been a month, but uh, I mean, I can only imagine how traumatic it must have all been and, and, and still be for you. The, the, the hardest thing is, is actually witnessing the attack on Salman and what it means to us as a society, as, as a group gathered to both honor and interview him and to see that happen in front of your eyes. It's much, much worse than anything that happened to me. Right, of course. In fact, uh, you know, Henry, for all our viewers in India, this is, uh, and, and you can imagine the amount of interest and concern about all of this here, uh, this is the first chance to actually hear of how it all unfolded. Now, from what we gathered, it all seems to have happened without warning. Uh, you were all setting up to, to start, and then he just jumped on stage. Uh, yeah, we, everybody was focused on the person doing the introductions, which was on the one edge of the stage and from the other edge, I think pretty much unnoticed uh, by, by the focus of attention, uh, the attacker entered the stage. And it wasn't until he was really quite close to us that uh, it became apparent that this was really more than a prank. Right. So initially it almost like there was a sense that this, yeah, this could have been a prank or this was, this was not a, not a murder, I mean, an attempt to kill him. Right. And, and beyond that, while there's certainly a great deal of interest in the actual events, uh, it, it's nothing that I particularly can articulate because I, I really wasn't seeing much of it. I, I was really in the middle of it and can't really describe it well. No, no, of course, I, I understand that. Uh, you yourself uh, got injured, Henry. In fact, uh, you know, I think you did an interview with the BBC perhaps like a few days or a week later where one saw the extent uh, of the injuries that you two suffered. What, how did that, were you trying to intervene or just got in the way of him? Uh, the, the injury to myself is, it, it occurred in ways that it, I can't really discuss because it's potentially part of the legal proceeding. And sure. I appreciate I appreciate your interest in, in many people, the sympathy, but it, it's it's not something that can be aired publicly at this point. I I understand, but but just to uh, but just to know that you are doing well, you're uh, it's you recover. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, from the injuries. miraculously quickly. Uh, I really am very grateful to the the speed of the recovery that the the skill of the people who took care of me and and, and, the, and the luck that the injury was really not uh, anything too serious. Right. Now, uh, Henry, many have pointed to the question of, 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 you know, adequate security at the event. But I guess it's been a while since uh, Salman Rushdie has been making public appearances like the one that you were moderating fairly regularly. And, and was the sense that somehow the risk level had come down. So there wasn't the need for that kind of, you know, heavy screening. Yeah, I, I don't know what was done or what wasn't done and what instructions were given and what requests were made. But certainly, I think living life f very freely for an extended period of time in a, in a society that operates as a free society, you, you can't live it as if uh, you're under armed guard all the time. And uh, so it's difficult to look back and say what should have or what could have been done. Sure. Um, there were initial reports immediately afterwards that, that you know, Rashti may not even 
make it. Uh, thank God the indication now seems to be that he's on the mend. Uh, have you had any chance to get any information on that or be in touch with him at all? Uh, we don't discuss other people's privacy. I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> okay. Fair enough, though. But in a wider sense, uh, Henry, what does this, what did that attack mean for, you know, this whole idea of freedom of expression, which ironically, Rushdie has been such an outspoken champion of and, and groups like yourself uh, have, you know, worked to foster? The, I mean, I, I think back to actually words he may have written back in roughly 1995, which became the charter of the City of Asylum movement, uh, one section in it, and I'm going to read this because I want to make sure I get it correct. Sure. It's no longer writing which is censored, but writers who are threatened and persecuted in their everyday lives. In the past, it was rarely the writer in person who was persecuted. Today, there are no limits. and It's the very life of the writer who is in danger, especially since the punishment is served with no warning and may be carried out at any time in any place. Can you imagine? That was written in 1995. Wow. And that's the core of why our organization exists and others like us. Uh, there's a network called the International Cities of Refuge Network, right. which has roughly 70 cities around the, the world that provide uh, right. sanctuary for persecuted writers. Yes. Um, is, there a, is there a concern that this attack because until this, I mean, writers have always been under threat, uh, you know, and, and that's not changed the world over. I mean, even before the fatwa and, and post it, but with this attack, especially when it takes place in a more kind of whatever one wants to call it, a more protected enclave, like in a, you know, a venue just outside New York. Uh, what is that? What is that doing to the whole idea of freedom of expression to the writer's community, you think? I, I think everybody is certainly more sensitive to when they're in public uh, and more aware. But at the same time, I'm not sure that it's intimidated in, in, in a way that, it, that the attack itself is still not broad enough, in, in, certainly in the United States. I can't speak to other places. Uh, I think there's a great deal of pressure that's more societally at large about speech in general not just written speech, but mm. conflicts in society, uh, the polarization have created great tension. And I, I talked to other cultural venues for even the past, well, pre-COVID, mm -hmm. uh, large crowds were coming. There's a great deal more security when large crowds are coming in at football stadiums, at uh, performances where plays where maybe a thousand or two thousand people sure. in our own in our own venue which is much smaller uh where we see sometimes very much more controversial topics we may have extra security that we normally wouldn't have any security so right yeah there there is a sense that this mission of protecting and nurturing uh the ability of people to exchange with one another amicably or at least safely uh, is, 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 is more in a tense situation than it had been. And just last question to you, Henry. Uh, what was the conversation that you were, you were planning on that day? I mean, what was the subject that you and Salman Rushdie were going to discuss? And would you like to resume that conversation or to complete that conversation at some point? Well, I think it, it almost goes without saying, I think we would love to complete that conversation. Uh, we were going to be talking about the Cities of Asylum movement and the need to protect writers, how it originated, how it's evolved, and also about the importance of sort of cultural migration and human migration to keeping societies alive and refreshing hmm. with newness in, his own, in, in the context of both his own life and the life of others and other writers and what it means to live the imaginative of life and to just to, to impact the societies around you successfully right. and and like you said you would like to have the to, to come you know to have that conversation soon <laughs> fingers crossed uh, well 
sooner the better, and, and obviously it has a, a new resonance than it had before. Okay, well, we very much look forward to that. Uh, Henry Reese, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks very much. Thank you. I appreciate it very much.